The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the world of your over-self. What is the man talking about? Over-self? What's that? Well, you might say it's that part of you where your imagination resides. The truth is that, according to any number of religionists, you don't exist at all. Only your imagination. When you refer to myself, you are actually talking about an illusion created by your over-self. Confusing? Certainly is to me. And it was more than confusing to Amanda Phillips. You are not a ghost, Morley? Of course not, Amanda. Oh, I dare say you would call me a ghost, but ghosts don't really exist. They're people. They simply live on a different plane of existence. I don't know what to say. Well, then don't say anything. That's the trouble with people on your plane. They say too much. But these different planes of existence... Morley, it's confusing... I simply don't understand. You will, my darling. You will. If you dare. Our mystery drama, Picture on a Wall, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Diane Baker. It is sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule, and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated. Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. No, I didn't say you don't exist, that you are not really yourself. Those who devote lifetimes to the study of what we are and why we are here, who try to understand God and our relation to him, I'm talking, of course, of priests, ministers, Buddhist monks, even philosophers. They say it. They say that the self is your conscious, the over-self, your subconscious, and the super-self, your unconscious. You understand? If you do, you're far more knowledgeable than I am because I don't understand at all. And as I said earlier on, neither did Amanda Phillips. Well, here it is, Amanda. Hope you like. Gil Franklin, it's beautiful. I figured it would grab you, even though you did say you wanted to live in Greenwich Village. <laughs> yes, I did. All my life in Gladesville, Iowa, I've yearned to be an actress living in Greenwich Village. But this, it's, it's so lovely. What, who, what? May I come in? Oh, Mrs. Broly, of course. Let me introduce you. Amanda Phillips, rising young star of the Broadway theater, or soon to be anyway, Mrs. Broly, landlady. Delighted to meet you, dear. Is uh, everything all right? Oh, it couldn't be more so. I never expected to find anything as, well, really enchanting as, as this. <laughs> Not at what I can afford to pay anyhow. It is only $45 a week, isn't it? Uh, yes. Well, how can you afford to let it go at that? A place like this, furnished so nicely, those beautiful paintings on the walls, especially that big one over the fireplace, and the garden. You can walk straight from this room into the garden. It's just lovely. I should think you could rent this for two or three times what you're asking. Uh, perhaps so, but... Yeah, well, you see, dear, I'm not only extremely old, but I'm extremely particular about whom I rent to. And as your fiancé will tell you... Uh, Mr. Franklin isn't my fiancé, Mrs. Broly. Oh, 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 I thought... I, uh, have hopes, Mrs. Broly. High hopes. Well, now, you're such a nice man. I hope you realize them. Because certainly Miss Phillips is a most attractive and desirable... Uh, something wrong, Miss Phillips? That... Smell. Smell? Aroma, I should say. A, a scent. The, the scent of lavender. 
Why, it's a uh, cologne I use, yes. A cologne, lavender. Now, uh, if there's anything I can do to help you get settled in, dear, anything you need, you just pick up the telephone. Uh, just to pick it up? It connects to a switchboard. I'll answer. Well, make yourselves comfortable. Strange. What? The smell of lavender. I didn't smell it until at least several minutes after she came in here. And another thing, it seemed to come from that direction, out there in the garden. And Gil... Yes? She's gone, but the scent, it's stronger. You're imagining things. I don't smell anything. And no, I don't have a cold. Very strange. Look, I've got to get back to the office or the law firm of Belding and Maxwell will be firing their youngest partner. But I'll see you for dinner tonight, okay? Very okay. Pick you up at seven. Well, better unpack my bag, put things away. That scent, it is, it must be coming from the garden. Locked. And no key. Yes, Miss Phillips. Uh, Mrs. Broly, the French doors into the garden, they're locked. Yes, dear. I keep them locked. You do? For your protection. You see, anyone who wanted to could get over the fence around the garden and, well, an ounce of prevention, you know. Yes, but I want to uh, use the garden. <laughs> what I can see... Through the French doors, it's it's enchanting. The fountain. The fountain doesn't work. I'm sorry to say, hasn't in years. Oh, even so, it'd be a nice place to sit. Those stone benches and everything. Would you bring me the key, please? Why, uh, why yes, uh, if I can find it. Find it? I'm not quite sure what I did with it, but don't you worry now. I'll do what I can to find it. I certainly shall. Well, I never. I just never. Never what, madam? Who? What? Who are you? Norcross is my name. Morley Norcross. Do please forgive me. I had absolutely no intention of startling you. I turn around to find you leaning casually against the French doors. The open French doors. And you... How? How did you get here? Over the fence, you might say. And how did you open those locked doors? I didn't find them locked. Well, I did. Well, perhaps it's one of those knobs. You can open them from one side, but not the other. Let's have a look, shall we? I'd rather not, if you don't mind. Oh, I'm sorry. You're angry with me. I've offended you, Amanda. You know my name. Tit for tat. You know mine. But you told me yours. Then it's altogether possible that that rather huge label on your luggage told me yours. <laughs> <laughs> of course. See? For a moment, I... Well, you won't believe it, but I thought you might be some kind of, of ghost or something. I believe it. Might I have the pleasure of showing you your garden? If you will step through your French doors into your garden, then, Miss Phillips, you can all but... Smell fall in the air. And uh, lavender. Uh, yet I, I, I don't see any in the garden. My cologne, I dare say. You use lavender cologne? Yeah, old-fashioned, isn't it? For, for a man, I mean. Why, p perhaps, but uh, I like it, Mr. Renault. Well, I say call me Morley. If we're going to be friends, that is. And I hope we are. Do you? <laughs> Why not? Why not, indeed? Beautiful fountain, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yes, it's beautiful. It's simple. A peasant girl holding a tilted pitcher on her shoulder. A pitcher from which the water used to pour into that large stone basin at her feet. Used to? Sixty years ago or so, yes. Sixty? Well, how do you know that? Oh, uh, how... How do I... Uh... Well, yes. You can't be more than... Uh... Oh, 40, say? Thank you. Thank you, my dear. So how would you know that this fountain hasn't, uh, uh fountained in more than, uh, 60 years? 16 years, I said. 16. And 
Well, I know because I once lived where you're about to live. In that service flat, the uh, living room and kitchenette? Mm-hmm. What did you do? <laughs> oh, what kind of work? I was a dramatic coach. You don't mean it. A dramatic coach? An excellent one, I might say. Uh, would you... Um, well, <laughs> I hardly dare ask this, but... Uh, uh, would you coach me? Of course. I fully intended to. You? Yes. Oh, now, Mr. Norcross. Morley. Morley. Well, you might have got my name off the luggage label, but but you couldn't you couldn't possibly know that I, I want to be an actress. No? No. <laughs> what is it? Ever read Sherlock Holmes stories? No. That's too bad. They're fascinating. Fascinating. Holmes could look at someone he'd never seen in all his life before and tell him everything about himself. I was an avid reader of Holmes, and somehow I picked up the technique. For example, your makeup. Oh, what about it? Unless I'm mistaken, on your cheeks, that's panistic, rosy glow, isn't it? <laughs> yes. And a touch of daylight orange in the corner of each eye. You're amazing. Of course, on stage, you'd use vermilion. But for daytime wear, you're most astute. And then, of course, your clothes are a dead giveaway. To say nothing, my dear. Nothing of your walk. Unbelievable, Morley. My elementary what? Elementary. <laughs> Would you like some tea? Do you have any? I mean, you will just move in. In my suitcase. Then I'd love it. Come along inside. No, 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 I'll, I'll sit here. I'll... I'll sit here. It's such a, a pleasant afternoon. I'll be as quick as I can. Yes? C come in. Oh, Mrs. Raleigh. Found the key to the French doors, my dear. Well, thank you. Though I am not sure I'll need them now. Oh, I'm glad you've decided to leave them locked. Much safer. But I haven't decided to leave them locked. As you can see, the doors are... Oh, as I can see what? Closed. I didn't close them. And if Morley had, I'd have... I'd have heard him. Morley? Did you say Morley? Uh, Mr. Morley Norcross. <laughs> He's sitting in the garden by the fountain. There's no one sitting in the garden, Miss Phillips. No one? Why, he's gone. And the door's locked. Of course. Why are you looking at me like that, Mrs. Bowley? Miss Phillips, finding this key put a very old woman to considerable trouble. Now, I don't mind that. I'm accustomed to it and delighted to make my tenants as comfortable as possible. But I don't like having games played on me, Miss Phillips. I don't enjoy being made a fool of. There are the keys you ask for. Please take care to lock those doors before retiring at night. But Mrs. Bowling. Amanda, you were dead tired, beat. You probably stretched out on that couch to rest and fell off to sleep. You dreamed it all. You had to. I... Uh... I don't remember lying down, Gil. I, I didn't. I started to unpack, and, and then the scent of lavender came to me even stronger than before. It came from the garden. I tried to go into the garden, but found the doors locked. And so I called Mrs. Broly. Yes, yes, you told me all this. But, sweetheart, it couldn't have happened. It just couldn't. Well, if, if it didn't... Oh, I don't know. I just don't know. Neither do I. One thing I do know, though. I'm taking you off for the best dinner you ever had. You need it. <laughs> I guess I do. Won't be a minute. Put on a new face. Okay. Know something? What? I did all right by you, finding this place. Comfortable, homey. Even the paintings on the wall. Not the usual crummy stuff you find in a place like this. Pretty good art. This one over the fireplace is a knockout. I haven't had a chance to look at it, really. It's by, uh... I don't know, some name here at the bottom. Can't, can't make it out. Dated... I can make that out. 1909. 
It's called the dramatic coach. Oh? Shows him the coach teaching a girl how to act. Very handsome guy. Tall, wavy chestnut hair, worn kind of long. Blue eyes, I think. Gray at the temples, strong nose. Very strong nose. Oh. Ready so soon? Let me see that. The painting? Yes, the... Huh? Amanda, what is it? The man is painting. The dramatic coach, Gill. That's Morley Norcross. Well, we may be talking about the self, the over-self, and the super-self. But so far as I'm concerned, Morley Norcross is a ghost. Now, maybe he isn't. Only my opinion. But the things going on in that Ninth Street flat, the things that happened to Amanda in that garden, you ask me, they're more than strange. They're uncanny. I wouldn't be concerned, except I remember Amanda saying she felt scared. I don't like that. It worries me. I'll be back shortly for Act Two. Involved with an experience having to do with the occult, the esoteric. Or rather, lovely young Amanda Phillips is. As we know, she has come to New York City from Gladesville, Iowa, hopefully to become a successful actress. One can expect all sorts of things to happen to one in the Big Apple, of course. But what has already happened to Amanda on her first day is, well, uh, to say the least, odd. The man in the painting is Norcross. The man you think you met out there in the garden? Gil, I know you think I'm spaced out. No, no, I just think you dreamed it all. I fell asleep and dreamed. Dreamed? About a man who was the living image of the man in that picture? A dramatic coach to boot? Well, it figures, doesn't it? What do you mean, it figures? Well, there he is in the painting. The painting is, is titled The Dramatic Coach. Your eyes may have just glanced at it, but your brain, it, it registered you clearly. You were tired, worn out from your trip... Stretched out to rest, fell asleep, and voila. Dinged of the man in the painting. The man who said he was a dramatic coach. Hmm. Well, I don't remember falling asleep. But uh, what you say makes sense. That's what must have happened, I guess. Sure. And speaking of getting rest, young lady, you've had a long, tiring day, so uh, I'm going to split. Oh, it's only 10 o'clock, Gil. You don't have to... No, 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 you're tired. And now that I've got you here in New York, you uh, you can count on seeing a lot of me, if you want to. Oh, of course I want to. You sound as if you really mean that, Amanda. Oh, Gil. Sweetheart, you know how I feel about you. It's just that... The great white way beckons. It's a career on Broadway or nothing. <laughs> no, a career on Broadway or marriage and kids. Oh, Gil, darling. Look, I've, I've got to try it first. I could satisfy myself that I've, I've got talent or I haven't. That I can make it or I can't. That, look, I, I, I've just got to have my chance. Be patient, please. For you, I'll outdo the patience of Job. Good night, honey. Good night, my darling. Oh, I am tired. Into bed, Ethel Barrymore Phillips. What? Lavender. The scent of lavender again. From the garden. He's there. Sitting by the fountain. And I'm not sleeping. Not dreaming. Oh, locked. Keys. Morley? Amanda. What are you doing here at this hour? Ah, it's such a beautiful evening. Full white moon. Yes. Isn't it an enchantment? The jet black buildings tall against the night sky. Lights shining yellow and orange and windows here and there. And here, right here in the midst of it all, a small oasis of peace and quiet, loveliness. <laughs> you keep talking like that, Morley, and you will cast a spell over me. I will, won't I? Amanda, do you mind my coming here of an evening, now and then? I won't, if you say no. Well, no, I... I, I suppose it's all right. 
You come when you want to. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. Morley. Yes? There's a painting over the fireplace. It's, it's called the Dramatic Coach. And the man in the painting, the coach, looks exactly like you. Yes. Yes, he does. It was painted by Scott Costain in 1909. The man in the painting is my grandfather, whose name was also Morley Norcross. Oh. Uh, you didn't... I, I, you didn't think... Yeah, I'm afraid I did. No, you couldn't have. <laughs> but, look, if you haven't lived here in 16 years, you said? Yes, 16. Well, what's the painting doing there now? <laughs> you have no doubt heard of actors being forced to leave their luggage behind because of non-payment of rent. <laughs> and you? Oh, Morley. <laughs> well, it's quite all right about it. It's quite all right, especially since I can look at it almost as much as I want to. I can take a peek now and then through the French doors. You poor man. You love that painting, don't you? You're very perceptive. Yes, I do love it. As much as I love this fountain. The fountain? Yes. Did Mrs. Broly tell you? No, no. I don't suppose she did. There's a legend goes along with this fountain. A legend? It's rather tragic. All the better. <laughs> the more romantic. Perhaps. A man, someone who lived in that flat where you live now, as I lived, a man committed suicide at this very spot. Oh, no. Why? I think the phrase of the time was unrequited love. Oh, Oh, Molly, that is romantic. It didn't seem so then. What? I mean, to say, the man must have felt the very depths of misery, experienced the most frightful emotional horrors to kill himself. He committed the greatest sin known to man, or God. Suicide? No, 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 no. Despair. And in despairing, renounced his faith in God. No one who believes in God truly believes can ever give way to despair. Amanda, you remember that. Yes, Morley, I shall. As for the legend, the fountain ran red with blood, his blood. And then it stopped flowing, just stopped. They tried to get it flowing again and again, but they have failed every time. According to the legend, it never will flow again until... Until? Until someone, somewhere, sometime, does something so supremely unselfish, so totally and completely selfless that the sin of suicide committed here is paid for. Beautiful. Beautiful. And when that happens, if ever it does, the fountain will gush forth once more. Um... I was wondering... Yes? Would you have any objection if I came in? Well, only for a moment. To have a closer look at that painting. <laughs> Why, of course not. Come along. Thank you, Amanda. Your grandfather, was uh, he a dramatic coach, too? Or did he just uh, pose for No, no, a... no. He coached actors and actresses just as I do. Well, there it is. Yes, there it is. Amazing, the resemblance. Isn't it? Isn't, isn't it? Was your grandfather, was, was, well, was he the man who uh, killed himself in the garden? Yes, yes. And she, the girl in the painting. Oh, he loved her. He loved her. And she loved him. Or so she let him believe. She was one of his pupils. Beautiful, talented. I can't tell you how beautiful, how talented. Oh, I shouldn't think you could, since you weren't born yet. Yes. Yes, that's, that's quite true, quite true. It's only hearsay. Well, what happened? Well, she began to get rather good parts and began to be known. And, well, she met a wealthy man and fell in love with him. Or some said his money. Oh, dear, it must have been tragic. It was more than I could bear. You? Oh, uh, my, 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 my grandfather, of course. Uh, but but you, you said more than you could bear. My imagination. I have a flair. I have a talent for 
placing myself in a situation of becoming uh, the people involved. I imagine myself. Well, you've played the game called Imagination, of course. No, I, I've never even heard of it. Oh, it's a wonderful game. And incidentally, extremely helpful to an actor or actress. Would you care to play it? Well, I... Well, let's do. Now, <laughs> let's imagine ourselves to be, well, those, those two people in the painting. All right. How do we go about it? First, look closely at the painting. Mm -hmm. Try to see every detail. Every detail. For instance, the furniture. Old-fashioned. High-backed couch with brocaded upholstery and anima glasses. That's right. And the table lamps, beaded lamps they call them, I think. That's right, that's right. And the gas jets on the walls. Notice how could I help but notice? I feel as if those lamps are actually lit. As if the gas jets are really glowing. As if I'm... Yes, yes, yes. I'm in the room with him. His arms around me, his lips close to mine. God. It's all so real. I am that woman in the painting. You are, you are. You have become her. You have become Iris Jordan. Iris Jordan? That was her name is her name because you bring it to life again. Iris. Oh, Iris. 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 No, no. Iris, what are you doing? Darling, Let Iris. me go. I love you. I love you. Molly. Mr. Norcross. Please, Iris. Unhand me, sir. Iris. You hear me, sir? Unhand please, me. Please. I told you I no longer love you. I love another, Thomas Broly, and I'm going to no, marry don't him. Don't do this to me, Iris. I beg you. Miss I beg you, don't. Door. I can't bear it. I can't Miss bear it. Phillips. I'll kill myself. Do you hear me? I'll kill myself. Miss Phillips. Miss Phillips. What is... Why were you crying out like that? We... I guess I, I got carried away, but, but we were only playing a game. A game? We? Morley Norcross and... Why, he's not here. Mrs. Broly? Broly? Is your first name Iris? Oh, oh, what if it is? Are you, were you the girl in that painting? I, well, you know, I, I, I think you're out of your mind. You were the girl in that painting, weren't you? You were an actress. And you were in love with Morley Norcross, but you jilted him. For a man named Broly. Thomas Broly. Miss Phillips, I will ask you to vacate these premises in the morning. This room, that garden, they're haunted, aren't they? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. Not only the room and the garden, but that painting, all haunted by the ghost of Morley Norcross, the man you loved and then jilted more than 60 years ago. I, I... That's why you rent this place so cheaply. Forty-five dollars a week. Tenants just don't stay here very long, do they? How long has it been since the last tenant, Mrs. Broly? How long? Well, more than a year. I see. <laughs> what happened to the last tenant? Dead. Found dead in the garden. She'd been strangled. And that's why you weren't able to rent the place? No. The tenant before... Her... Found dead? Strangled? Yes, I... Oh, my dear child, I only pretended to be angry with you and demanded you to leave to, to save your life. After letting me rent the place, I hoped the haunting was over, but I see now it isn't. Morley's ghost will haunt this place, haunt me till the moment I die. You must go in the morning. No. No? I'm not afraid of ghosts, Mrs. Broly. But more than that, I don't want to leave. Don't ask me why. I don't know. I'm afraid I do. What? Because you've done what I'm almost sure the others did. They couldn't bring themselves to leave either. And they didn't know why. Nor did I then. But I think I'm beginning to know that. You've fallen in love with Morley Norcross, Miss Phillips. You've fallen in love with a ghost. Well, 
There's a twist for you. Has Amanda fallen in love with the ghost of Morley Norcross? Or is some other power, some other force at work? Let's not forget that we've been talking about not ghosts, but the baffling, the mysterious complexities of the human mind. I'll return shortly with Act Three. with a ghost. That surely must be a curious experience, to say nothing of a dangerous one, especially when, if previous tenants of Amanda's little apartment did the same thing, they were strangled to death as a result. But why? Morley Norcross, his ghost, that is, seems a charming, gentle, anything but violent spirit. So why? Why? Amanda certainly has no answer. As for Gil, the man who hopes to marry her... I just don't plank believe it. This story of yours of what happened here last it's night. true, Gil, every word of it. You can check it out if you want to. You're a lawyer. Go to police headquarters or wherever you go. Find out if two women were strangled here or not. If you believe all this, what are you staying here for? Mrs. Broly says... Well, thinks. <laughs> I've fallen in love with Morley. <laughs> Now I've heard everything. You in love with a ghost. Amanda, you don't think you are, do you? If you think that, then you need help, sweetie. You need help in a bad way. No, you're telling me I'm crazy. Well, if you're not, you certainly sound well, I it. I think you better go, Gil. Now, wait a Please, minute. Please, Gil. I take time off from the office to come down here and drive you to a tryout. Your first audition for a Broadway play, and now you tell me to get lost. God, I'm sorry, but you get me so upset, so angry with you, and... We've never quarreled like this before, never. Oh, sweetheart, I'm sorry. I really am. Now, come on now. Try the eyes. Oh, Gil. I can't believe you're in love with a ghost. But you wouldn't be in love with another man, would you? Oh, don't be silly. Let's go or I'll be late for my audition. Gilbert Franklin, please. One moment. Hello? Gil? Amanda? Oh, Gil, I'm so excited. You got the part. Not the little part. The walk-on. Gil, they listened to me for the ingenue lead. And I got it. I got it. Ingenue lead? Hey, that's fantastic. I can't believe it. I can't either. <laughs> now, this calls for a celebration. I'll take you out to dinner tonight. A champagne dinner. No, no, no. Let's celebrate here. At your place? I haven't cooked in a week. I'll go out and do some shopping. Okay. And I'll bring the champagne. Enough for the three of us. The three of us? You, me, and your ghost boyfriend. <laughs> I don't think that's very funny, Gil. Uh-oh. I put my foot in it again. Forgive me. Uh, now, come on. Tell me you forgive me. I forgive you. And, uh, honey? Yeah? Ask Morley Norcross to forgive me, too. <laughs> well, I never. I just never. <laughs> I, I just never. You know, Amanda, that's virtually becoming a cue line for me. Why? Dear, why have you gone so white? Why are you trembling so? I, I know now that you're a ghost. Oh. It makes me feel scary. Oh, please, no. The last thing in the world I want is to frighten you. But you ought to know that. Particularly since I did all I could today to help you get the ingenue lead in Hope Springs Eternal. You? Didn't you know? Yes, I did. I felt something. Something that lifted me above myself, above my talent. That made me act as I've never acted before. But I didn't know it was you. It was. I was there all the time, coaching you. Now, still frightened of me. No, not really. Only... Yes. Did you strangle them, Morley? The two women who lived here before you? Yes. I confess it, I did. Why? The painting there above the fireplace. I didn't tell you the whole story behind it. Why not? I was ashamed. Ashamed? Of what I did to Iris, or tried to do. You see, my dear, she didn't leave me for Thomas Broly just because she'd fallen out of love with me. 
I was the reason she fell out of love. My ungovernable temper. Temper? Rage is a closer word. Violent rage. Another word for it would be ego. My ego that demanded its way or I would fly into an insane fury. Iris, yes, the withered little woman who was your landlady feared me, loved me, but feared me. And that is why she left me. That is why, let me also confess, I killed myself out there by the fountain. Not from despair, as I told you. Not from misery. But from sheer, limitless, violent rage. And I have been paying for it ever since. Oh, Morley. You helped me today. How can I help you? Amanda. Are you sure you want to? Oh, yes. Very sure? Very sure. Then meet me. Meet me by the fountain tonight at ten minutes of twelve tonight. Ten minutes of twelve? That was the hour I took my life. Promise you'll be there. I'll be there, Morley. I promise. All right, Amanda. All right, I'll leave. Gil, don't be angry, but... What'd you expect me to be? I invite you to dinner to celebrate. You say, oh, no, come to my place, I'll make dinner... I come, I bring the champagne, and from the minute dinner is over, you keep suggesting I leave. Gil, it's late. A quarter to twelve midnight is late. It is for me. I've had a long, nerve-wracking day, and I'm... Okay, okay, I'm going. You want to know something? I may not be back. Oh, Gil. 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 The scent. The scent of lavender. Coming from the garden. Yes, Morley. I'm coming. Coming. Yes? Yes, who is it? Gil Franklin, Mrs. Brody. Just a minute. Just a minute. What do you mean, disturbing an old woman at this hour of the night? I need my rest. And I need my girl, Mrs. Brody. The girl I intend to marry. What's that got to do with me? Maybe nothing, maybe everything. All I know, there's something queer going on here, especially tonight. And I intend to get to the bottom of it. Mrs. Broly, I want to know the whole story. The whole story, you understand? Of what's happened in that room since Morley Norcross committed suicide over 60 years ago. Amanda? Morley! I startled you again. Not really. It's just ten of twelve. And a beautiful moonlit night. Very beautiful. You're ready. You're sure you're ready to keep your promise. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. What do you want me to do? Amanda, you think of me as a ghost. You are. Ghost. Ghost. It, it's only a word, my dear, because, because I am dead doesn't mean I don't exist. I do. I am as alive as you, only... I live on a different plane of existence now. A different plane of existence? You might even say a different level of consciousness. I... I don't understand. No mortal does. No mortal can. Uh, Try. It's... It's as simple as this. Nothing is. Nothing begins, nothing ends. It's all the same. A continuum. Only on different levels, varying planes of life of living. To sum it up, my darling, there is no such thing as life. No such thing as death. I... I guess I don't understand. (laughs) You know, the level I'm on, I don't understand all of it either. This only do I know. The world that was once mine and is now yours is nothing but illusion. Illusion, my dearest. That is all it is So it will be only an illusion you leave now. Leave? My world? To enter mine. Oh. You promised. Remember, you promised. Yes, but... Oh, Morley, how can I leave it? My world? Illusion. Illusion, reality, call it what you like. I don't know. But Morley... Morley, I'm I'm going to be the ingenue lead in a Broadway play... It's what I've wanted, dreamed of, yearned for since I was a child. I can't leave that. You must. I can't. I tell you, you must. 
Can't you understand? What you're, what you're leaving is nothing. Nothing to what you'll find on my plane. I'm not taking anything from you. I'm giving you everything. But what I want... You promised! You promised! Rotten hell if you didn't promise! You're strangling me! You promised! You me. promised me! Stand up! Keep my promise! I didn't say I wouldn't. Only that... That I... Wanted something else. Oh. So much. So much. You wanted it that much? You want it that much? Yes. But you would give it up for me? A promise is a promise. Oh, and a selfless act is a selfless act. What? Amanda? Amanda? She's not here in the room. The dog. Look, Amanda. Look. And listen. The fountain. It's flowing again. And birds singing in the garden. Remember, I said the fountain would never flow again. The birds sing no more. And so someone, somewhere, sometime, did something so supremely unselfish, so totally and completely selfless that the act of suicide committed here. My suicide would be painful. Oh, Amanda. 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 I knew it would be you. I knew it. Amanda. And I was right. Amanda. Gil. Oh, oh, Gil. Darling, darling. The fountain. Oh, my God, the fountain. Yes, it's flowing again, Mrs. Bowley, and the birds are singing. I, I don't understand. I don't try. Just don't bother trying, Mrs. Bowley. But, but I must, because I've always had the feeling that if ever the fountain started again, I... I would stop. You... you would... Oh, oh. Do you catch her? She's fainting. No, Amanda. She's dead. Not dead, Gil. Alive. Very much Alive. On another level, another plane of existence. And oh God, make it a happier one for her and Morley. Planes of existence, levels of consciousness, the self, the over self, the super self. What do I know? comes to that, what do you know? We don't. Because if what I read, what they tell me is so, our brains simply aren't equipped to understand. I once asked a Buddhist monk about this, and he said, you mustn't try to understand, just experience. <laughs> that says it all, I guess. I'll be back shortly. Amanda Phillips didn't become a Broadway star. She became Mrs. Gilbert Franklin. Oh, she played the Agenew lead in Hope Springs Eternal, all right. But the play folded in New Haven. Well, if Morley Norcross was right, it doesn't much matter. After all, the world we live in, you and I, nothing but illusion. Some illusion. Our cast included Diane Baker, John Newland, Anne Seymour, and Dennis Cole. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. I'm not with the police, I swear it. Then why all the questions, huh? Why all the nosing around? Take it easy. I don't want no trouble in here. There's something. She's got to be. Best told her I do business in your place, and now she shows up here the next morning. Don't that sound fishy to you? Oh, well, it's funny. <laughs> Come on, baby, Jim. Jimmy, don't. I, I was just the statue. Oh, I just wanted the statue. The what? I, I guess she's this thing. What's oh. the statue got to do with... 
Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. You're, You're right, Worma. She's not a cop. Yeah, she's been acting like a cop, but that's not what she is. Please, please. Oh, please let me go. I, I didn't mean any harm. Please oh, let me no, go. No, 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 sugar. You're not a cop at all. What you are is a nun. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs>